Hey guys and welcome back for another hips and shoulders mobility and stability class. In this class today we're going to be focusing on some strengthening and stability and mobility as well in our thoracic spine and shoulders and also how that connects to the hips, um, building strength and stability in the hip flexors as well. So all you're going to need for today's class is some space on the floor, a mat if you have one, and if you have a strap available, then go ahead and grab that and we'll begin with our straps in Tadasana in the centre of our mats. So finding yourself in the centre of your mat with your strap, we're going to wrap one hand um, up with the strap. If you don't have a strap, you can just do some arm circles instead. Grab a scarf, grab a belt, anything you've got to hand, even an item of clothing. The other hand is going to take quite a fairly wide grip. The strap is going to sit in the hip crease. When you're ready, find yourself in Tadasana, thinking about lengthening through that spine, and then we're just gently going to bring that strap up and over the top of the head, take it all the way back behind you, and then bring it all the way back in front of you again. So we're just going to do 10 rotations each way. Moving with your own breath and your own time. Taking that strap in front and behind. And as you're doing this, think about keeping those ribs glued down towards that pelvis. So you're not flaring up and over as you open out. Don't bend and arch through the back. Try and keep that spine nice and neutral so that the movement is just coming from the shoulders. I'm going to go for two or three more. and then bring that strap all the way back up and over. Release your hand from the strap. And from here, we're gonna come into our garland pose. So we're gonna heel toe the feet out to the edges of our mat, finding our squat stance. Inhale as you lift the hands up above the head, palms together at the top. And as you exhale, come all the way down into the bottom of that garland pose. Just take a moment there to get comfy. Think about having a nice upright torso. If that means you are here today, rather than right down with your heels connected to the floor, then that's fine. If you need to lift your heels, you can either support them with a block or just hover, that's absolutely fine. The more um, important thing for you here is to have this nice upright torso. Just take a moment there, bounce from side to side, get into those hips, and then maybe take the hands up and over the head, kind of like a Mexican wave, opening up, Promoting that nice upright posture, opening up your thoracic spine. One more each way, and then come all the way back to centre. From here, left hand goes to the floor, inhale to lift and twist to the right. Exhale, release, right hand to the floor, inhale to lift and twist to the left. Exhale, release, two more each side. Last one, and then slowly plant your hands on the floor, heel toe your feet back underneath your hips. You're going to take the hands to the front two corners of the mat, walk the feet to the back two corners of the mat, and we'll find our down facing dog. So from here, rather than worry about extending the legs straight away, bend the knees, think about spreading the fingers, gripping the mat with the hands, pressing the chest through the arms, crown of the head towards the floor. Then think about tailbone to the ceiling, so you've got that nice long extended spine. Gently pulse through the shoulders, opening up that thoracic spine, gradually coaxing it open, stretching off the chest, stretching off the shoulders, and building a little bit of strength through the arms too. One more pulse, then come to still with the upper body, and then just gently start to pulse through your heels, walking the feet from side to side, opening up the calves, the hips, the hamstrings. And then we'll just gently take a body flow. So from here, we're going to inhale as we roll forward, drop the hips, look up, find cobra. And then exhale as you tuck the toes, press back, to down facing dog. Two more for me. So inhale, roll forward, drop the hips, look up, 
Plank Cobra. Exhale, tuck the toes, press back to Down Facing Dog. Last one, inhale, roll forwards, drop the hips, look up. Plank Cobra. And then this time, sit back towards your heels in extended child's pose. Forehead to the floor, reaching the hands forwards. Just take three deep breaths. Expanding through that upper back. Last deep breath all the way in. Exhale. From here, we're going to scoop the chest all the way through along the floor and come up into sphinx. So we're going to stay quite low, keeping the elbows or the forearms to the floor. Bring the elbows underneath your shoulders, spread your fingers and grip the mat or the floor through your fingertips. Think about pulling your chest through your arms, pulling those shoulders back and down away from the ears and really opening up your chest, using your back muscles to help kind of pull me through and open up that back. Take three deep breaths wherever you're at. You'll notice this is quite an active position. And actually it's pretty hard, although it's one of the easier level moves. Holding this position actively, squeezing all those muscles is quite difficult. And one more deep breath all the way in. Exhale. And then we're going to melt the body forwards onto the floor. From here, in your prone position, we're going to take the hands out wide. In a T-shaped position, shoulders facing down. We're just going to do a bit of mobility through the shoulders, sorry, palms facing down. We're going to do a bit of mobility through the arms now. So we're going to inhale as we lift the left leg up and over, coming into that scorpion roll, tapping the toe toward the right hand, and then coming all the way back up and over and switching sides. So right leg goes towards left hand, and then switch sides. We're going to do three each side in total. Opening up the spine, opening up that front body, opening up the arms and the shoulders. One more each side. And then slowly come all the way back to centre. Take the hands back underneath the shoulders. Inhale as you press up to Cobra. Think about squeezing the glutes this time, squeezing the inner thighs, pointing the toes, activating through the legs so that you are supporting through the lower back. Roll those shoulders back and down, look up towards the ceiling and just let the neck hang or the head hang back if you want to. Three deep breaths. Last deep breath all the way in. Exhale. And then slowly inhale as you press up. Exhale, sit back in extended child's pose. Forehead to the floor once again. Just take another deep breath all the way in. Relax off that lower back. Maybe wiggle from side to side. Exhale. And then we're slowly going to come up onto all fours. So hands under shoulders, knees under hips. And we're just going to do three cat cows. So we're going to inhale as we dip the stomach towards the floor, look up towards the ceiling. And then as we exhale, we're going to push up into that angry cat position, sucking the navel back and up, pressing the ground away, pulling the shoulder blades apart. Inhale to lift. Exhale to round. One more. Inhale to lift. Exhale to round. And then slowly come back to centre. From here, take the hands slightly further forwards, tuck the toes, press up and back into your down facing dog. We're going to be working into pigeon pose today. So we're going to start to open up the hips now as well as the thoracic spine. So if you take your left foot outside of your left hand, find yourself option one in a low lizard lunge. If you just want a restful session and you just want to stretch, find yourself in that low lizard lunge. 
If you want to make this more about strength and stability, then lift that back knee off the floor, really press the ground away and kick the heel back behind you. Reach the heart forwards and press through this front foot. In both cases, toes should be flat to the floor. Take a nice deep breath in. And if mobility allows, as you exhale, see if you can come down onto your forearms. If you need to find a halfway house, you can always use a block or a cushion to support your arms and just make that gap a little bit less. Make sure those toes are glued to the floor. Take a nice deep breath all the way in. Exhale. One more deep breath all the way in again. Exhale, release that back knee to the floor, whichever variation you're in. Take the hands back underneath the shoulders, come up onto the hands. And then we're going to reach back and over, right, uh, sorry, left hand to right foot, bringing that heel in towards the glute, pulsing it a few times. And then option one, to stay here and just hold the heel towards the glute. Or option two, come down onto the forearm if you want a deeper stretch. Option three, flex that foot back into the hand, kick back and look over that left shoulder. Take three deep breaths, whichever option you're in. Your right foot, sorry, your left foot can roll over now onto the knife edge so you can lift those big toes off the floor to get a deeper stretch in that hip. One more deep breath all the way in. Exhale, release that hand. Come back to all fours again. Step back to your down facing dog position, pedal it out and we'll take a body flow. So we're going to inhale, roll forwards, drop the hips, look up, find cobra. Exhale, tuck the toes, press back to down facing dog. From here, right foot is gonna come outside of the right hand this time. Option again to drop that back knee. If you just want a stretch, stay here. If you want to add some strength and stability, lift that knee off the floor, kick that heel back, really press into that leg, squeeze that thigh. From here, Option one, keep your hands exactly where they are. Option two, if mobility allows, come down onto your forearms. Sending that knee out to the side, toes remain glued to the floor. Reach the heart forwards, eye gaze forwards, and keep kicking back with that heel. Take a nice deep breath in. Exhale. Two more deep breaths. Exhale, release that back knee to the floor. Come back up onto your hands if you're on your forearms. And then everybody is going to take right hand back to left foot, bringing that heel in towards your glute, pulsing it a few times. And then option one to just hold that heel against the glute. Option two, you can come down onto that forearm. Option three, you can kick back into that hand as you twist to look over that right shoulder and you can roll over onto that knife edge, outside knife edge of your foot. Pick the option that suits you and then take three deep breaths. Last deep breath all the way in. Exhale, release that foot. Come back up onto your hands, step back to your down facing dog. I'm going to take one more body flow. So inhale, roll forwards, drop the hips, look up, find cobra. And then exhale as you push back to extended child's pose. Forehead to the floor, just take three deep breaths as you reach the hands forwards. Really focus on opening up through the upper back, feeling that expansion between the shoulder blades. As you exhale, just let everything melt towards the floor a little bit further. Last deep breath all the way in. Exhale. And then we're going to work our way into puppy pose. So option one, if you want to stay here today and just chill out, that's absolutely fine. If you want to go further, then we can start working our way further toward the floor with our chest. Bringing our chin to the floor, lifting up off our heels and looking for the front of that mat. Just take three deep breaths in this position, even if you're going to go further. Last deep 
Last deep breath all the way in. And exhale. Of course, the option is to absolutely stay here if you want to, or keep crawling forwards, bringing that chest toward the floor, opening up that thoracic spine, making sure that your knees don't go past, or your hips don't go past your knees, so your hips are vertically stacked and the chest comes through to the floor. So you're really focusing on opening up that upper back and your cervical spine, your neck. The lower back should be absolutely neutral. Take three deep breaths, whichever variation you picked. Last deep breath all the way in. Exhale. And then slowly come back up onto your hands and knees. Sit back in extended child's pose. Relax the arms by your side. Shake it all out. Reverse that bend back the other way. And we're going to start working into our pigeon pose. So taking the hands back to the front of the mat, tuck the toes, press up and back into your down facing dog position. Just take a moment there if you want to stretch it out through the calves, the hips, the hamstrings to walk that dog. And then when you're ready, we're going to take that right leg up high to the sky. Three leg down facing dog. Option to bend at the knee, take that hip twist, open up that right hip flexor. And then when you're ready, bring that knee through to the front right corner of the mat, slide that left leg back. Untuck the toes, press the hands underneath the shoulders and push the ground away as you focus on opening up that left hip flexor this time. If you want to make this harder, and if you want to work on opening up those hip flexors, then stay in this upright position. You can also try and bring that knee or that shin parallel to the front of your mat, whilst keeping that right or left hip bone rolled down towards the left side of the mat. So figure out where you need to be today. If you need to use blocks to support yourself, you can. And then when you're ready, press the ground away, take a nice deep breath all the way in. And if you want to come into sleeping pigeon, walk the hands all the way forwards, folding the body over that front leg, transferring the stretch more into the glute. Take three deep breaths wherever you're at. Last deep breath all the way in. Exhale, and then slowly walk the hands all the way back up into that seated pigeon position. And then we're going to take that left leg around and over, finding ourselves in half lord of the fishes. So option to keep this le uh, right leg tucked underneath you. If mobility doesn't allow you to have both sit bones on the floor, then feel free to extend it out in front of you. So pick your leg variation that suits you. Making sure that both sit bones are connected to the floor. Inhale to lift and twist. Exhale as you bring that left, uh, sorry, right arm around that left knee and look over that left shoulder. If this is enough for you today, you can stay here. If you want to take it further and see if you can take a bind, you can take that right arm over the top, see if you can tuck that knee into the armpit and then tuck the hand through the hole of your left leg. With your left hand, see if you can reach around the back and interlace your fingers, taking a bind whilst keeping both sit bones connected to the floor. Wherever you're at, take three deep breaths. Last deep breath all the way in. Exhale, release the hands, unravel the, yourself and then slowly make your way all the way back to that seated pigeon, taking that left leg back behind you and then take the hands back underneath the shoulders, tap the toes and step back to your down facing dog. Take a moment there to just pedal it out, walk through the feet and then when you're ready we're going to switch over to the other side. So left leg goes high to the sky, three leg down facing dog. Bend at the knee, open up 
that hip flexor on the left side. When you're ready, bring that left knee through to the front, left corner of the mat this time, untuck the toes, press the ground away, find yourself in that upright seated pigeon. So remember, if you're particularly tight in the hip flexors, it might be a good idea for you to stay here, stay here today, and just open up that right hip flexor. You can always work all into the glutes as well by moving that shin more parallel to the front of the mat. So the more parallel you are, the deeper into that hip you're gonna get as well as that hip flexor. So go to wherever you need to be today. If you want to take it to sleeping pigeon, press the ground away as you inhale, and then as you exhale, extend forward over that left leg, reaching the hands in front of you, forehead to the floor, three deep breaths, whichever variation you're in. Last deep breath, all the way in. Exhale. And then slowly work your way all the way back up to that seated pigeon. Right leg now comes around and over that left knee. So the foot goes down on the outside ground of that left knee. Option again to extend that lower leg if you need to, so that both sit bones are connected to the floor wherever you are at. From here, we're coming into that half lord of the fishes. So left arm goes around right knee, inhale to lift and twist, exhale to look over that right shoulder. If you want to take the bind, remember lift that left arm up and over, tuck that knee in toward the armpit, reach through the leg, and then wrap that right arm around the back, See if you can grab the fingers and make sure both sit bones stay connected to the floor. Take three deep breaths. Last breath all the way in. Exhale. And then slowly unravel the hands, unravel the arms. Unravel the legs and come to a seated position on your mat. Taking the legs straight out in front of you, flex the toes back towards you, pull the fleshy bits of your bum out from underneath your sit bones. Inhale as you lift and lengthen, exhale as you come down into a simple seated forward fold. Reaching the chest over the thighs, take the eye gaze to below the knees. Just take three deep breaths. Last deep breath all the way in. Exhale. And then slowly inhale as you come all the way back up to seated. Scoot your bum down towards your heels, come onto your back. Bring your knees in towards your chest, hug them tight with both arms and just gently massage that lower back into the ground. And then we're gently going to come into pretzel pose. So we're going to extend, so holding onto the left leg, extend the right leg all the way to the ground as you exhale. With the left knee, draw the knee across the body towards the right and take the left hand out to the side, palm facing down. So you're kind of in that supine twist. From here, keeping that right hand on that left knee, you're going to see if you can grab that right foot with your left hand whilst keeping your shoulders glued to the floor. Hopefully your leg is not gonna cramp up like mine. If you can't reach that toe, then that's absolutely fine. Keep that leg extended. And then take the eye gaze to look in the opposite direction. So toward the left from that knee that you've drawn across your body. Take three deep breaths. Last deep breath all the way in. Exhale. And 
then inhale as you bring your knees and your head back to centre. Bring that right knee up as well, and then we're going to switch sides. So exhale as you drop that left leg all the way to the floor. Taking a hold of that right knee with the left hand, take the right hand out to the side, palm facing down, and then draw that knee across the body to the left as you exhale. Inhale to lift and twist the head to look towards the right. And with that right hand, see if you can grab a hold of that left foot and keep those shoulders glued to the floor as much as possible. Three deep breaths. Last deep breath all the way in. Exhale. And then slowly release that hand from that foot. Inhale to bring the knees and the head back to centre. Hug them in tight with both arms again. Rock from side to side. Massage that lower back. And then whenever you're ready, just roll over onto the right side of your body and gently come all the way up to seated. Finding yourself in the centre of your mat. And we'll take one final deep inhale as we lift the hands up above the head, hands together at the top. As we exhale to the forehead, kind thoughts. To the lips, kind words. To the heart, kind feelings. Namaste.